Dungeon Siege 3, oh boy, what the fuck happened? I'm whipping out the salt shaker here, and my dick as always, because I really did not enjoy the direction this game took compared to its predecessors. Now, to be fair, there is a lot of reasons this game is not like Dungeon Siege 1 and 2. Here's a list of them now. A, it was made by a different developer, Obsidian, by the way, so they're not just, you know, random shitheads. This company has produced good games, just not this one. It's the whole of ass. Two, there was a considerable distance of time between the second and third game's release. Release from my ass. C, this was 2011, so everything had to have this strange, vaguely gross look and feel. Like ass. It's genuinely the Xbox 360 effect, which did well for some things and not so well for others, where it just looks all muddy and very polygonal. Maybe it had to do with engines being used more industry-wide than they were in the 90s and early 2000s, but this entire statement hasn't been investigated. I don't know when people started using Unity or some shit like that. Might have been sometime earlier. Might have been in 2011, exactly. The point is, I can see why the third Dungeon Siege feels like such a big departure. I also don't see why they didn't even attempt to make this game anything like the other two, but what the fuck do I know? Oh yeah, I wanted to welcome you to February 37th, the last day of the month, just in time to wrap up this string of three games before getting back into Mario and Luigi March Challenge videos. Go check that out in the future. It's not out yet. I have not made it yet. I'll stall for time until it's out by saying the F word nine times in a row. I guarantee this is the first video on YouTube to ever segue for a future video by saying fuck, 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 Oh yeah, it's Dungeon Siege 3 at the moment. You'll forgive me. It bores me to argue the merits of this product, but forget it. It's compare and contrast time. Get out the vendicogram, you first grade fiend. Let's start working hard to come up with some ideas. Well, the first two games are more akin to CRPGs with fairly automatic combat and the potential to have large parties with tons of spells and dynamic battles. And Dungeon Siege 3 is a single player beat em up action RPG more akin to Dark Souls than Diablo. Sounds like they knew their audience pretty well. And you might not expect this, given all the fucks I've said, but Dungeon Siege 3 isn't a bad game, okay? Hear me say that, because I'm not going to have a load of praise overall today, but I'd like you to know that I've played worse things. It's just aggressively average. Uh, sorry, actually gonna retract my statement. I think the game is kind of objectively not good, but that's mostly stemming from the name of this here video game. If it were Slap the Fuckers 2 for the Sega Dreamcast, we'd be cheering right now, but since it's Dungeon Siege 3, it's marred by the thought that these devs didn't care about the IP they were working on. Except that this game actually does have lots of references to Dungeon Siege 1 and 2, and that's really cool. These mentions of certain characters and events won't mean anything to a brand new player, but it's at least, you know, giving the long stand fanning some acknowledged anning. There was an actually written sentence in there, but I lost my train of thought because I talked too fast. I talked 600 million miles. For me, I especially like them poking fun at the randomly genius mech wielding goblins from the first game, saying that this shit is impossible, couldn't exist, goblins are dumb fucks, and Krug, they suck dog, you know? So, you know, world building lore. Anyway, sorry, the game is actually getting turned on now. Let's talk. Firstly, this is unrelated in a way, but can games in general stop having ear-fucking startups because the whooshing noise of these logos is like an atom bomb, it's unpleasant, and if you're playing on default sound for 90% of the products that come out, you better go get the clogs unclogged out of your ears because apparently they're tailor-made for the clinically deaf. Secondly, let's be frank, this game is more mid than Missouri, it couldn't be more nothing interesting if it tried, mostly because if it tried to do anything, it'd be more interesting, but in all ways it feels like a prototype phone game or an Xbox Live arcade game you paid 15 bucks for, not a grand follow-up to a relatively beloved and successful series. But through its badness, its blandness, its big amounts of nothing big, could Dungeon Siege 3 possibly be the best ARPG ever made? No. We've got our stables to discuss today. It's an ARPG after all, so let's try to work through this section by section, starting with combat, and then later on I'll get into gearing and skills and on all, all the enjoyable parts of the character, and later on I will have dinner, I will eat, I will shit, I will take a shower, I will go to bed, and I will wake up tomorrow to make more reviews on more ARPGs, let's do it. Combat feels disgusting and sluggish, and maybe that's due to the character I chose, the big sword man, but with a three hit auto combo that never changes, which also sucks dick, I must admit. There's nothing about attacking things I enjoy. Shit will walk away from you, or you can't possibly avoid damage and attack at the same time. Enemies are sponges. It's it's miserable in many ways. And I wasn't kidding, I'm unable to attack in a dynamic fashion. Some games, better ones, would have it be possible to change how you attack based on how you're moving, but here, regardless of what you're trying to do, it's wham, whack, whomp, all over and over again. And yeah, sword man has the sword and board style as well, and that feels better for speed and stuff but it only hits one enemy at a time which feels horrendous when facing down nine of the same man. And you might think that special skills are the saving grace but the abilities you get access to are sometimes the worst things I have ever seen. Like this ground slam, tremor attack, it's absolutely literal undeniable dick hole and the whole like the whole of dick. It's ridiculously slow, it's completely outclassed and powered by auto attacking, you're locked in place and it doesn't have even good range. It's practically the same as normal attacking. You'd think that on level up you could improve these skills what with their two different selectable modifiers, mix and matchable but they are all accomplishing 
practically, practically nothing for me. There's also the ability to empower your attacks, but this isn't even good either because you can only do it maybe twice every 30 seconds. By holding shift, you can spend one or more of these orbs of purple to make an attack better, including your auto attack, but I don't know, it's not extremely exciting. Plus, these are how I could heal myself, so using them to deal a little more damage was not the best usage in my opinion. Yun. I don't know, I didn't say the rest of the word, I had a fucking stupid script. And for your special attacks, you can only use the enhanced version once you get your full mastery gauge filled up, so get used to using the lamer version for a while, but even though I say lamer version, the souped up version isn't actually all that good either, but the game tries to fucking convince you that something sounds powerful, but from all the ones I tried, I was thoroughly unimpressed. And really, it never improves that much, you're running to and fro, attacking enemies with the same three to four attack strings, and seriously, anything that flies or moves around to shoot projectiles makes me want to drop an anvil on my head, on my ass, on my balls, on my dick, on my feet, on my quick name and body part. You'll get to be in the video. Dick. I already said dick, you fucking audience member, dumbass, but really no more joking. The enemies in this game are awful. Are you interested in killing man or regular man or third man? Because there's a lot of the common man in Dungeon Siege 3 and if they're not a bipedal being, they're probably being a flying gargoyle that shoots energy to just put a bit more hate in your heart. You know, it's great. And I haven't confirmed something, but this is a hard game. And I know that's probably because I was on the hard setting. Thank you very much. But you could personify easy, medium, and hard as brick, stone, and harder stone stone because regardless of the difficulty, everything is spongy and deals a large hunk of damage. Bosses are crazy annoying, which is a lot of perks that suck to deal with. They're randomly solid, meaning you can't use mobility attacks to pierce through them, which was a key strategy of how I engage in combat. And since they have a billion health, you could just spend forever slashing awkwardly at them, combined with limited bad ways to heal yourself and special attacks that don't do enough. Boss fights are a slog. And slog is a good word. Slog is adequate to describe this game, for which I do not vibe, and certainly would not prescribe for any and all bored out of your gourd individual as usage of the broadsword against a horde of warlords does not strike a chord with me or with anyone who plays this product, which I am obligated to appraise, but instead puts me into a semi-powerful malaise, a decided haze, a phase that feels like early morning Mondays. But anyway, the game is just kind of dog shit, fuck it. What positively does not aid in this problem is that gear is obtuse and boring, plus it's like the game doesn't even want you to look at it. I forgot to mention this in gameplay, but the game uses WASD to move and you aim with the mouse. If you're using a controller, the two sticks approach would make better sense, but on a keyboard, you feel like a fucking tank instead of a person, in conjunction with the fact that gear can't be shown without walking directly over and each piece of gear uses the exact same model meaning it's impossible to visually tell which rarity something is without walking over it and also gear never changes so the scimitar of fire will always be the scimitar of fire but the stats will improve arbitrarily based on what rarity something is to be honest there's colors on items and i suppose that indicates rarity but i could not care less there's absolutely nothing interesting about gearing here for the most part if stats higher i took it regardless of what stats seemed good for me for example the weird wording on things would have you believe that something like chaos vampire is just a really odd way of describing lifesteal and for some reason, chaos is the word of choice here. Chaos lightning, chaos withering, and that's just for weapons or on armor, you have momentum. You know, what the fuck does momentum do? Stamina, armor, block, all these things. I bumped the microphone. Get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> Anyway, no, seriously, all of these things, all the keywords, they have no inherent tooltips, nothing to even remotely describe what they're for. And with nine different slots, you just can't care. It's a blur of thoughts and ideas, no cool items, no sets, just arbitrarily named numbers. And when your unique ear has chaos fire plus eight, I choose to not care what that means. Oh, another thing I should have mentioned earlier, and this is a scripted video, I have the ability to change this, but I shan't fuck it, but you actually get to have a partner in this game. So we go from eight maximum players in the first game, to six in the second, to two in the third. Wonderful work, but you know, it's nice at least to have someone along for the ride. Is what I'd completely mean, except they feel really very terribly weak and their best application is to pick me up when I get ragdolled. So yeah, in combat, if you die, you just fall over with a bit of the old hernia and your dumb AI partner can come and get you. If they get hit at all during the resurrection process, it breaks and they have to restart it. So the most fun part of the game, honestly, was watching to see which stupid AI would make the right decision because it's not the number one priority of your partner to come and get you. And in fact, they sometimes don't care about you at all, opting to craply attack the enemies. It's also fun to watch the enemy fruitlessly try to attack your partner as they resurrect you in the face of a thousand people. And you're also allowed to resurrect your ally if they fall in combat, but for some reason they always seem to be far more durable than I did. In the case both of you die, back to the last save you go, and in Dungeon Siege 3 there are designated save points, except they're kind of funky with allowing you to use them. What I mean is, sometimes you're in front of a boss fight where you'd like to save your progress in case you get totally owned, but the game doesn't let you save in combat as it claims, even if everything is dead and not around, and to be honest, there's a lot of hangups with how the game works overall. When you level up, you don't get a 
prompt right away. You have to be out of combat for a pretty long period of time. So if you level in the heat of battle and wanted to get a suave little upgrade to help you finish off the current encounter, it's time to not do that. Instead, just wait until after the battle and then stand still because if you get into another fight, you will further delay your chance to allocate points and stuff. So the point is, there's a sufficient clunkiness wherever you look. Anyway, back to partners themselves. They are fully customizable and gearable, but you can never use them. So you're stuck with their RNG ass the entire time. The unique and interesting part of these friends of yours is that they're all the other playable characters. And depending on who you pick to play as, the story slightly changes. I would be interested to see how much it changes based on each playthrough, but I can't really be bothered. There's a motherfucker outside with a car, and he's just revving it at my window. I think he's gonna crash into my window and kill me. Also, you can swap your active party member at any time, so that's fun, except I never found a reason to swap. Besides the fact that gearing four people would take longer, the first partner I had was fine for everything, at least I felt like they were. Your playable characters are, by the way, Gun Girl, Blade Bro, Stick Shithead, and Fire Female. And this game was in that middle of the road era where everyone has identical physical characteristics, because why not? You'll notice the excessively big bubbed women, duplicated old man and young man, same aspect. Body, fuck it. Even down to this animation of a character walking away after talking to you is so hilariously overused it just completely distracted me. The dialogue always locks on the last input and then they turn and start walking away. Like guys, please make a second animation at least, please. And yeah, a lot of the time you're having dialogue fun with random people, but it's just a drag. I saw praise for this plot online, but I can't find anything interesting about it personally besides the few references to Dungeon Siege 1 and 2, which I genuinely do appreciate. The ping pong behavior repeats the process of go to an area, be talked to, reply, be talked to more, reply be talked to more, fall asleep, wake up, be talked to again, be done, walk outside of town, fight a few things before the inevitable break to talk to more people. Rinse and repeat and that's kind of the game. But here's something pretty awesome, at least your di dialogue choices actually do have an impact on how the game goes. I have zero respect for myself. While large story strokes don't seem to be impacted, you get differing buffs and boons to your character depending on the choices you make. This is good. I love when games actually do make it important to select one option or another instead of funneling the player to the exact same point regardless of what they select. Select. So genuinely, props to Dungeon Siege 3 for that. Nice work. And that's what I was talking about earlier. I don't want to go off on a game just because it's not my thing. As you know, I don't get mad at games that often. Fucking game sucks ass. Boy, shit sucks. Fucking sackers hate this. This sucks. Weird, disgusting shit. Getting harder by the second. Useless fucking ass dog shit makes me gag. Fuck you, dink. Awful, totally garbage shit tier of the game is now garbage and sucks. No one gave a shit. Very, very fucking horrible. Yeah, but those games sucked ass and deserved it. I'll conclude by evaluating the skills system for you, but I've already kind of touched on it. As you level up, you gain one skill point and one passive point. Each of these skills and passives can be enhanced five times total. Enhancing the skills don't really mean much to me. As I said, a lot of them are just utter trash. The passives are fine, I guess, but I mean, just saying you deal 4% more critical damage is not the most excitatory thing in the world. It's like comparing a nice sandwich to a brand new computer. Both are nice, but one is definitely more eye-catching. And it's that fucking sandwich. I mean, look at that rye bread on that. Oh, shit. Other than those two skill choices per level, you don't have much else to decide. And in fact, you have a pretty limited bar to put skills on in the first place, namely uh, three of them total, and that's kind of unfortunate. It's always a pet peeve of mine when you are unable to really explore an ARPG systems, and Dungeon Siege 3 seemingly tries its best to make you not play around with a bunch of stuff at once. It's stiff, like me. It's boring and repetitive, like me. It's really just not the best ARPG ever made. Unlike me, I'm the best ARPG ever made. It's me, ha. It's really sad to me that Dungeon Siege lost every drop of its identity here, and for newcomers to this three installment series, I feel like they wouldn't hate this, but be totally disinterested by it, which is sad because the old Dungeon Siege 1 and 2 are such unique games, and I feel like they're worth checking out for their strange feeling alone. This one, I would only recommend if you had it running on your computer by coincidence. Some magician put it on your screen without your knowledge, and you could play it. You don't want to piss off the wizard. That's what I would think anyway. So that is the end of Dungeon Siege. There are no others to try out, but with all this talk of dungeons, a thought has crossed my mind, and maybe it's time, maybe next time. On second thought, I'll rescind that and instead do uh, other shit. I don't know what it'd be, but I hope you'll be there for it. Bye now.